and uh, so important as every Santa Fean knows uh, to highlight this important issue. So I want to acknowledge uh, a lot of the folks that are here today. I see City Councilor Peter Ives, uh, Mayor Pro Tem, Councilor Rebecca Wurzberger. I know she was here. I just saw her. I'm signing the I see it. Oh, signing petitions. Good, Rebecca. Um, is Kathy Holy in here? And I just want to acknowledge our city manager, Brian Snyder, and our fire chief, Eric Lutzenberger, are with us today. And uh, you'll hear from Eric in a little while. His experience with uh, climate change and wildfire is pretty up close and personal for us here in the Southwest. Uh, I, I just want to say on my behalf, you know, that I, we can't ignore this any longer. That's why we're so happy to participate in this today. We have a moral obligation to the future to leave them a healthier planet. Just like our parents and grandparents handed us a better planet, uh, we need to be responsible stewards for where we live. You know, uh, I grew up here in Santa Fe and these mountains were my playground. A lot of times I always go, oh, there's nothing to do, there's nothing to do. I go, the Rocky Mountains start here and run for a thousand miles. There's plenty to do. You know, but we, we're feeling it now in Santa Fe. Extreme weather conditions, I was just telling Ron, we hit 102 here uh, in June in Santa Fe. Uh, for the first uh, 50 plus years of my life, we never got over 96 degrees here in Santa Fe. And now it's not unusual to hit 100 in Santa Fe. So we have the droughts, we're in the third year uh, of a drought, wildfires, heat waves, and recent flooding. And I was just in Palau, Mexico, and they're having the same types of weather. Uh, they flooded about six different villages and the Chihuahua Airport while we were down there. Uh, recent forest fires burning in northern New Mexico uh, were not close to the city of Santa Fe this year. Uh, however, it already is affecting our economy, you know. Uh, Jody can tell you, and our CBB director can tell you, and every hotel in town can tell you. All the calls, is Santa Fe on fire? Is it safe to go there? Is there smoke in the air? Uh, so it's, it's affecting our economy right now. And a city that prides itself on having the best air quality in the United States is having to deal with more and more smoky days from these fires. Uh, so people are questioning what's going on in Santa Fe, what's going on in New Mexico, and, and so are we. And we, uh, we know we don't want to affect our economy with this, and we're working hard to get the message out. That it's still beautiful here, but we're working to, uh, we need to work harder to keep it that way. You know, our economy is built around tourism, so camping, hiking, and other recreational opportunities are a big draw. But we recently had to close the Santa Fe National Forest. And that's played a major role. And I had a friend visiting me from graduate school. Hadn't seen her in 30 years. She lives on the East Coast. I kept saying, come to Santa Fe, come to Santa Fe, come to Santa Fe. She gets to Santa Fe and the forest is closed. You know? And those are things that we know didn't used to happen in our community. So uh, we know it's changing. So, uh, you know, I hope that the uh, I Will Act on Climate Change bus tour will help further the discussion on climate change and bring attention to this critically important issue. It's not just our tourists, it's not just our economy, it's who we are, it's what's going to be for future generations, for our children and our grandchildren. And anybody from Santa Fe can tell you we think in terms of six or seven generations out what's going to be the effect for those folks. Uh, that are coming after us. So we gotta, we've got to do this. We've got to bring this attention, and the attention has to lead to more action. You know, Santa Fe has moved to 20% uh, of our municipal power supply is now generated with solar, uh, solar energy. But we can move faster, and we need to move faster, and whether they're regulatory or uh, other types of obstacles are in our way, we need to get them out of the way, and we need to move faster for the sake of our grandchildren and our great-grandchildren 
and for these, this fantastic landscape that we've lived in for more than 400 years now. So enough for me. Here's a, we have really an expert here with us in the form of our fire chief in fighting wildland fires and uh, what those impacts are having on our forests, on our communities, and on our firefighters. So please welcome uh, Fire Chief Eric Litzenberg to say a few words. Thank you, Chief. Thank you, Mayor Koss. Appreciate it. So, yeah, I was asked to speak. Um, someone determined I might be uniquely qualified to speak to this issue, and I think I can speak to part of it. Growing up in the Santa Fe, I can remember what kind of impact wildland fire had on me as a youth. And I think I can count on one hand the number of fires that were memorable for some reason or another. I think probably even more significant, every year going up to Bandelier as a school kid, we would see the, the burn scar of the 1977 La Mesa fire. And I remember what kind of impact it had on me. But the number of fires in total, I think I could count on one hand. The truth is, things have changed. And in 2000, the Cerro Grande fire really redefined what fires mean to our community. And it keeps happening. In 2011, Los Conchas redefined it once again. And it was redefined once again with the Whitewater Baldy Complex of 2012. I think yearly now I can count on one hand how many fires of significance happen that affect the city of Santa Fe and our community. So the times have really changed. The truth is, wildland fire is becoming part of what defines us as a region. Arizona, Colorado, Texas, and New Mexico have all had the biggest and most destructive fires in our recorded history in the past five years. Again, I'll say things are changing. To give you a perspective, the six worst seasons nationally have happened in the last decade. So the last decade has really been this redefinition. In the 1990s, on the federal level, a wildland season would cost in the neighborhood of $1 billion annually. In the last decade, that's risen to $3 billion annually. In 2012 alone, over 9.2 million acres were destroyed by wildland fire. And that caused over $1 billion in damage. So the significance has risen. The impact from wildland fire, as Mayor Boss was saying, is not just from fire itself. On an annual, every, every summer, now we have a blanket of smoke, whether it's because of fires on our hillside right here outside of Santa Fe or fires as far away as Arizona and Mexico, we're blanketed in smoke. And we have health issues, and we have people calling us saying, is it safe to travel to Santa Fe? Will I see the real Santa Fe in this smoke? Our answer is yes, but the truth is it does have an impact on us as a community and on our economy. And then there's the flooding. After fires, well, that's not the end of our issues. We use the example of the orchard, the Dixon Apple Orchard, just south of here. It made it through the fire, but months later, in the monsoonal rains, it was decimated by the floods. Well, a more recent example, pretty much every afternoon right now, Pecos is getting, getting smashed with a, a flood of black mud and debris from the fire that occurred months ago in Tres Lagunas. So really, it's not just the fire. There are many impacts on Santa Fe, on us as a community, and on our economy. The changes in the wildland world are evident, and we as a profession have been struggling to meet those changes. I submit to you that it is a good time now for us as a community to change our behaviors and policies to really address this new paradigm. I do thank you for your time. I thank all of you for your commitment to Santa Fe, and uh, thank you. Mayor Goss. Thank you, Chief. Uh, next, I'd like to welcome Mary Wolf. She's a, our honored guest. She's the co-owner. Didn't say that, did She's the co-owner of Collected Works Bookstore and Coffee House, a uh, local treasure in Santa Fe. And uh, welcome, Mary. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Mayor Cox. Collected Works Bookstore first opened its doors 35 years ago in 1978. In 1978, there were no giant chain stores, there was no Amazon.com, and the hottest day all year in Santa Fe was 95 degrees. Things have changed. 
Like most downtown Santa Fe businesses, Collected Works relies heavily on the tourists who come here for the many things that Santa Fe has to offer. The architecture, the history, the art, the culture, the food, and the environment that gave birth to all of these things. They come for the light. Henry Shipman wrote an article about Santa Fe for the New York Times in 2007 in which he wrote, that light, the cottonwood filtered sunlight of the morning, the thick, orange, juicy light of the evening is one reason why Santa Fe seems to exert such power over both the people who live there and the ones who return year after year. An article in The Atlantic this month opens, if you doubt that climate change is transforming the American landscape, go to Santa Fe, New Mexico. Sweltering temperatures there have broken records this summer, and a seemingly permanent orange haze of smoke hangs in the air from multiple wildfires. Our faint light is disappearing in that haze of smoke. Those who return year after year, they aren't returning. At Collected Works, we see evidence of this disturbing trend with every passing season. Just a few examples. Although our business is increasing every year, wildfires, drought, and periods of extreme heat reverse that trend. In 2000, the Cerro Grande fire contributed to a 13% decline in our summer business. In 2010, the South Fork fire led to a sharp drop in summer gross sales followed that winter by a drought-delayed opening of the Santa Fe ski area, and our holiday sales went down as a result. In the summer of 2011, smoke from the Wallow and Las Contras fires made life almost unbearable at times. That July, the sun was a red ball in the sky over Santa Fe. The moon glowed an eerie neon blur at night. By August, we felt the impact on our sales, but we'd already felt the impact on our customers. Tourists and locals were packing up and leaving, unable to tolerate the heavy smoke layer that descended on Santa Fe. And the wild and ash from the wildfire settled on every surface, and the bookstore incurred a costly cleanup effort to clean it up. So forest fires, persistent drought, and record temperatures are a bigger threat now to my business than Amazon.com or e-readers. But it's not just fires that have affected us. We've also lost sales because of delivery delays caused by climate changes across the country. Planes grounded in Phoenix due to extreme temperatures. Devastating tornadoes across the Midwest, crippling floods and snowstorms on the East Coast. For businesses like Collected Works Bookstore that survive by offering superior customer service, superstorms are now a bigger concern than superstores. Collected Works has joined the Santa Fe Green Chamber of Commerce, an organization of businesses that are addressing these issues on a local level. And I urge Santa Fe businesses to join the Santa Fe Green, Green Chamber of Commerce and um, help the fight for businesses in Santa Fe. But although I'm here today as a business owner, I'm more importantly here as a mother. My three-year-old son doesn't yet know what we've done to this planet. He and his generation deserve to enjoy the same New Mexico that Henry Shookman wrote about. The New Mexico that O'Keefe painted. The New Mexico that has inspired countless writers, artists, photographers, and travelers. Instead, he's growing up in a time of unprecedented ecological disaster. This June alone, the New Mexico Department of Health issued three separate smoke advisories for our area and one extreme heat advisory. People, especially children and the elderly, are now regularly being advised to stay indoors. We can't afford to ignore the impact of climate change. This isn't a political issue, it's a human issue. And we need to work together to protect Santa Fe, New Mexico, and the entire planet for the future. Thank you. Thank you, Mary. That was pretty eye-opening, wasn't it? Uh, next, I'd like to uh, have another guest, uh, Dan McCarthy, owner of Santa Fe Mountain Sports. Good morning, and thank you to the organizers of the I Will Act on Climate Change bus tour for including me in this conversation, and to Mayor Koss for welcoming us to the chambers. 
My name is Dan McCarthy and I'm co-owner of Santa Fe Mountain Sports. We're a small retailer specializing in bicycles in the summer and skis and snowboards in the winter. For obvious reasons, fires in New Mexico hurt our business. Who wants to buy or rent a mountain bike when they're being told to stay inside because the air quality is so bad from the smoke from nearby wildfires? But fires are just one part of the story of climate change here. Pajarito ski area across the valley in Los Alamos lost 20% of its acreage and two chairlifts to a fire two summers ago. The root of the problem is the cause of these wildfires from climate change. The result is drought, increasing temperatures and decreasing amounts of snow, as well as moisture in the forests. As a kid in the 70s, I remember Ski Santa Fe opening regularly on Thanksgiving or even before with tons of natural snow blanketing the mountain. The new norm is for them to open three or four weeks late with a strip of man-made snow on one run, which we jokingly refer to as the white ribbon of death. Yes, our business is affected year-round by climate change. The negative economic impacts on Santa Fe and the state of New Mexico are huge. Even if your businesses aren't directly related to tourism, the health of our economy is, and that hurts everyone. The challenge, as I see it, is to educate and inform the people. I applaud the efforts of the people on the bus tour because it has to start with individuals. Ultimately, it's the big industry polluters and the utilities that need to change. But first, we need to get the message across that climate change is real and that you can do something about it. The repercussions of our inaction will cost more in the long run, and the legacy that we leave our children will be irreversible. We must act now. Thanks for having me. Thank you, Dan. Let me just be mayor for a second. So you got to check out these stores while you're in San Francisco. They're great stores. You know, our next honored guest is Mariel Nanasi. She's the executive director and president of New Energy Economy. And that's her sign over there. It says, Soul, not coal. So, Mariel. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Koss. And thanks to all the organizers who helped make this bus tour possible. I will act on climate change. I will act on climate change. And actually that's what happened to me personally. I went and I went to a conference and I knew about climate change but I didn't really understand the urgency of it. And when I, when I realized the urgency, I thought how can I look at my children in the eyes, in their eyes and say that I didn't do anything that was in my power to act on climate change. So I encourage you all to act on climate change. Where does our electricity come from? Do people know? When we flip that switch, 60% of our electricity comes from coal. 20% comes from nuclear. 14% from natural gas. 4% from wind. And 1% from solar. 1% from solar. In a state that has the Zia, the Sun Zia, as its flag symbol. We can do better. Now in the city of Santa Fe, we are doing better. We have 20% of our electricity that we consume from solar, but not so in the state. And, we, and that is causing financial risk to us. When we invest in coal, which we are investing in coal, there's financial risk to our ratepayers. There's health risks. We did a study last year in 2012 $250 million in public health care costs. That's asthma, that's lung disease, that's heart disease. That's 300 miles away in a plant that we talk about our sunsets. That haze that we see is not only from the fire, forest fires, it's from the San Juan generating coal station. That's where that haze is coming from. And I believe that we can do better. We can create jobs in solar. Actually, in, the, in, in Santa Fe, we have so many people are currently now employed, more people employed in the solar industry here at home, local hometown employment, um, than in any other industry, including all the fossil fuel industries put together. So investing in solar is investing in our hometown. It's creating jobs. And you know what? 
We have solar potential here that some people say is world class. We have abundant renewable resources, but we can't just talk about potential. Again, when I look at my children in their eyes, I don't say, oh, you have so much potential. I say you must actualize your potential. And here today, I'm here to tell you that we need collectively as Santa Fe to stand up and actualize the potential that we have to be a renewable energy leader here in New Mexico, in the region, and in the world. Thank you very much. Act on climate. So now batting cleanup, I want to introduce former Santa Fe City Manager, he's been my boss twice. <laughs> he was City Manager and before that he was Deputy Secretary of the Environment Department when there was first an Environment Department under Governor King and uh, then he was New Mexico Environment Cabinet Secretary for Governor Bill Richardson. Uh, now he is the first this only resonates in Santa Fe, but he's the first non-Texan administrator to... See? Tell him, Santa Fe loves that. He's our administrator for the Environmental Protection Agency, South, Section, South Central Region, it's called Region 6, right? You said you said, you know? So, uh, you know, he's a good friend of Santa Fe, good friend of New Mexico, He's always, for the 20 years that I've known him, been a fighter for protection of New Mexico's environment and New Mexico's communities. So I want to introduce Ron Curry. Well, I wanted to thank everyone for being here today. This is a great event. I have a lot of memories in that building over there. Some of them are good. Some of them are good. <laughs> but I have a lot of memories. That's the important thing. And I'm very excited to be here and see so many friends that I've worked with in the past and look forward to working with you in the future. And as you were reminiscing about how things have changed in New Mexico, one of the things that first came to my mind was when the fires took place up in the Baldy. One of the first experiences that I had of northern New Mexico, being that I was born on a native New Mexican from Hobbs, New Mexico, but one of the first experiences I had was going up to Baldy on a horseback ride and camping up there when I was about seven years old and fishing up there. And now to think what everything looks up there now from the photographs that I've seen is a devastating thought. And you can look at case after case after case as you look at the region that I'm fortunate to work in and represent. Whether you look at the tornadoes in Oklahoma, whether you look at some of the hurricane activity down on the coast of Louisiana and Texas, you look at the forest fires here in New Mexico, in Arizona, outside of our region, and up in Colorado. And it starts to build a very, very strong case as to why we're here today and why we all need to act locally on climate change. Gina McCarthy, who is the new administrator for EPA. Yeah, I'll, I'll go on with that. Gina McCarthy, who is the new administrator for EPA, has many words of wisdom that you'll be hearing over the next several years. But I think one of the most important things that she has said to myself and to a number of people at EPA it really applies to what we're here today about is that she said EPA is not the only place that the American citizen should go or expect to go to find environmental protection. You find environmental protection through state governments, you find environmental protection through county governments, through municipalities, through NGOs, and through the private sector. And if you look around at the crowd we've got today, you've got that statement manifesting itself with the group of people that we have here today. The EPA is here to collaborate, but you folks are the ones that are going to really change things when you act on climate. 
And it's so important to keep that in mind as you go forward. Gina, Gina has that, she knows it. She's worked in many state agencies and she's worked for Democrat and Republican executives in her career. But she wants us all to understand that and it's important for EPA to understand that part because we have to be able to collaborate and find solutions that work for climate. Gina in her term as administrator is going to focus on climate change with all the many things that we have happening at EPA. But it, that is the premier thing that she will spend her time on. As we come back to New Mexico and to Santa Fe, I think of some of the results of fires, as the chief was talking about. And we don't have to go far in our community here in Santa Fe and look back at the history of fires that we've seen upstream. And you look at the effect of new contaminants that come into places like Cochitee Lake, and you look at the concerns that you might have about the Buckman well fill, and what contaminants now flow much easier into our, into our water and drinking water systems. You can go up here on the side of the hills and look at the reservoir that we have up there for drinking water here in Santa Fe. And you have to always be concerned about the ease that contaminants can get in to that reservoir because of fire. So it's not just what goes up in the air, it's what goes into our water as a result of a forest fire that we have to be constantly aware of. In Dallas, where I work, I have talked frequently to the people there. David Gray is here with me, who's Director of External Affairs, and one of the first, first trips that he and I took was to Louisiana. And we got caught in a rainstorm between New Orleans and Baton Rouge. And we joked that I hadn't seen rain so long, this was like in October of last year, that I was willing to get out of the car and stand in the rain along the interstate just to talk, just to feel the sense of rain. So one of the messages that I've talked about is that New Mexico's drought, which leads the nation, and the impacts of drought, which we all have to be concerned about, is so important. You look at the annual amount of rain in Albuquerque, which sometimes runs as much as 8.5 inches a year, and in the last 12 months, up until this recent monsoon in the last few weeks, Albuquerque experienced only about 4.9 inches of rain. And then you look at the effect of how that affects places like Elephant Butte Reservoir and its total capacity, not just the amount of water that's in the lake, but its total capacity to hold water is dropping because of the drought and the reasons that have caused the drought. So I'm going to review, review just real quickly here as we look at the President's campaign on the climate. He wants to continue this momentum as we go into the future that we're going to start here today by cutting carbon pollution from power plants, by building a 21st century transportation sector. You know, we passed, we passed the rail runner coming up here this morning, which I'm very proud of because it came apart during the Richardson administration, and it's important not only to the environment, but it's important to the economy of this town. I love the rail runner. And we need to challenge the way, the way we use energy, using less dirty energy, using more clean energy, wasting less energy through our economy, by reducing methane and hydrofluorocarbons, by preparing, by preparing the United States for the impacts of climate change, and by leading international efforts on climate change. But this all brings us back to why we're here today, and what Gina McCarthy has said, is that EPA is not the only place that you can find environmental protection, nor should it be that case. Look around at our audience, look at the private sector, all the way up through state government and to the federal government. We all have a role to play, and the role that you play here today is much bigger than any role that EPA will play. So I want to thank you for inviting me. I'm excited about this whole effort that we're going to win. 
we're going to win. We're going to we're going to move this ship in a way that we can tell our children that we did something to protect their future. Thank you very much. Thank you, Administrator Perry. I just uh, also want to introduce Matt Royball from uh, Congressman Ben Raymond Hahn's office. Thanks for being with us today. And I, uh, we're just to the point where if there are any questions from the media or, or anybody else for any of our speakers. Well, that's an easy press conference. <laughs> all right. Thank you all very much for coming today. And thank you to all our speakers. Thank you so much for inviting me.